So this begins chapter six, lecture one. In this particular set of videos, we're going to develop uh, fluid linear momentum. And so we'll proceed similarly to what we did in the last chapter when we developed the energy equation. We'll come up with a linear momentum equation and an angular momentum equation, and then we'll work some examples. Our lecture objectives for this set, series of lectures are to develop the principles of linear and angular impulse and momentum for a fluid so that the loadings and fluid pressures exerted on the surface can be determined. We'll look at specific applications of these to uh, propellers, wind turbines, turbojets, and rockets. So we're all kind of we're familiar, familiar with uh, Newton's uh, laws of motion, first law, second law, and third law. Of course, the second law is where all the problem solving uh, becomes. And so really what we're going to do here is we're going to transform this equation uh, to deal with uh, momentum, change of momentum for a fluid system. So in the case of fluids, again, we have to look at what's known as a control volume. So we have the actual boundary of the control volume. Uh, we have the control surface illustrated in red, which, which fluids can pass in and pass out of. And then we inside it, we have the control volume itself. So in breaking up Newton's uh, second law, we have to consider some of forces on the body as well as some of sources on the surface. Uh, so these body forces act throughout the entire body of the control volume. These are things such as gravity, electric forces, magnetic fields. Uh, the surface forces act on the control surface itself. These are pressures, pressure and viscous forces and reaction forces uh, that push on the, the, uh, the control surface. So the total force is, is going to be the sum of those two forces. So first, let's discuss linear momentum. The design of many hydraulic structures, such as floodgates, flow diversion by blades, as well as pumps and turbines, depend on the forces that a fluid flow exerts on them. So again, here we've, we've taken uh, Newton's second law, we've rewritten it in terms of control volume. So we'll have the sum of forces equal a local momentum change that conters, uh, that uh, exerted inside the control volume. And then we'll have the, what's known as the convective momentum change that, that occurs to the boundary itself. So another note here is, is the way this is written. So these are velocities, but this symbol V sub S of C sub S, this is the velocity of the fluid measured relative to the control surface. Uh, also, if the flow is steady, then the first term on the right is going to be zero. So oftentimes, in some cases, this term uh, will be zero. So again, the, the best way to learn how to apply these is through examples. And so here, let's take a look at example 6.1. So we have the end of a pipe is capped with a reducer as shown in the figure. If the water pressure within the pipe at A is 200 kilopascals, we want to determine the shear force that the glue uh, along the sides of the pipe exerts on the reducer to hold it in place. So here's a picture of the, the reducer. You can see the diameter at the, at the base is 100 millimeters, and at the top is 25 millimeters. We have our control volume defined to be shown. Uh, we could draw free body diagrams on the, on the, the object. So the force the glue exerts is given by S, F of R, and so you've got two sides to it, so uh, half on each side. The pressure is pushing upward, and the pressure outside is atmospheric, so it's zero. So the first thing we need to, to we can use is we can use the continuity equation. So we write um, the continuity equation. Again, we're looking at uh, our boundary level layer here in red. So inside the control volume, uh, Nothing's, uh, we're not creating any mass. Uh, so this term, this first term is zero. The second term is uh, we have a fluid coming into the control volume and exiting the control volume through the, the control surfaces. So we got our standard kind of form. We can divide the, the density out. The density is not changing, so we can divide that, that term out. So we have VA times the area at A plus VB times the area at B is equal to zero. Uh, then again, the negative sign and positive signs I've, I've explained before here. 
so we don't know V at A or V at B, so, but we can get a relationship between the two. Uh, and that's why we're interested is this relationship here that, between the two. So now what do we do? Well, we have a, the, the energy equation we can apply. So we use the continuity equation to get the relationship between the velocities uh, at B and A. So at uh, B, it's going to be 16 times the velocity at A. So now let's use the Bernoulli equation. And in this particular example, uh, he didn't tell us what the distance between A and B is, so we're going to ignore uh, uh, the, uh, the Z terms. And that's, that's what he does as well. It would been nice if he would gave us uh, a, a value, but he says it's neglect, uh, negligible. So uh, in that case, we'll make Z at A and Z at B both zero. Uh, the pressure at A, we'll get, we're told that in the problem. Uh, gamma, we know it's, it's water, so it's 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, so gamma, remember, is um, uh, density times G. Uh, v at A, uh, we can leave that as a very uh, uh, unknown. V at B is, a, is an unknown, but we know that VB is 16 times V at A, so we can plug in plug in that value. So we calculate this, we get V of A equals 1.252 meters per second. Uh, so from our equation here, we can determine V at B is 20.04 meters per second. So finally, we can look at the momentum equation. We have sum of forces equals the uh, control volume term plus the control surface term. Uh, this is inherently a three-dimensional equation, but here we only have forces in the, the wider up and down direction, the y direction. So we can write it as a scalar. So sum of forces in the y direction equals, this first term is zero because there's no nothing happening with inside the control volume to, do, to change the momentum. Uh, the second term, we're going to end up with two terms. Remember, this is a control surface term. We're going to end up with a term uh, for each boundary. Because that's where the water is coming into the boundary at A and out of the boundary at, at B. So at B, you'll have uh, it'll be positive because you again the differential area is outward and the flow is outward, so the dot product is going to yield a positive sign here. You're going to have a velocity, a density, and a velocity. Uh, so here's the velocity at B coming coming in. Uh, then you're going to end up with a density times the velocity at B times the area at, at B. Um, for the other term, for the at A, you'll have the velocity at A. Uh, again, you'll get a density, a velocity, and area at A. The negative sign comes from the fact that the area vector is outward and the velocity is inward. Now, we'll point this out in our book. He, uh, in the uh, last edition, he has an error here. He doesn't have the area. He's got another velocity term. It's simply a typo there. So here you can... Factor out the density, you can uh, multiply the velocities, and you can write this uh, term a little bit simpler here. Uh, so we've taken care of the left side of the equation. Now we need to take care of the, uh, the uh, left-hand side of the equation. Um, so we've got the right-hand side. We need to fix the left-hand side. So what forces are on it? Well, there's the pressure force pushing upward at A. So it's 200 kilopascals times the area at A. Uh, that's this term. And then you have the reaction forces pushing downward. That's why you have the negative sign. Uh, you got, you know, two on each side, so you can just consider uh, that adds up to be F of R. Uh, and that has to equal uh, this term here. So you can plug in the density, you can plug in the velocity and the areas. Uh, we know the areas because we're told here what they are. It's uh, 100 millimeters and tw uh, 25 millimeters, respectively. Uh, those are the diameters, so you half those to get the to get the uh, radius, pi r squared in each case. Uh, and the only unknown here is f of r, so you can solve for f of r, which is 1.39 kilonewtons. And notice it's positive, so that indicates the shear force acts downward on the reducer, as we assumed. If we got a negative sign, that would have meant that we guessed wrong here.